I'm Jeffrey Wang, Chief Architect at Amplitude. Today, I want to talk a little bit about identity resolution in analytics. Getting identity wrong is one of the most common reasons why analytics data is bad. And so I want to share a little bit about how Amplitude does it. If you can't get identity right, you end up with a bunch of situations where you have wrong assessments of what users have done, you draw incorrect conclusions about user data, it's bad all around. We've spent a lot of time thinking about identity resolution and how to do it in an accurate, consistent, and easily verifiable way. So I want to share a little bit about how we got there. So to start off, I want to talk about the most basic form of identity resolution, which is essentially choosing a single identifier to represent your user. In the early days of the web, uh, that was often just the cookie, which is stored in the browser. So when you visit the website, you get a cookie, and then whenever you come back uh, or in that same session, you continue using that same cookie as the identifier, and you aggregate all of your metrics and analytics around that single identifier, and that's it. For products where you don't log in, uh, that's actually pretty good, or rather, that's about as good as you can get because you don't know anything else about the user. But as soon as you end up in a situation where a user uh, has a login and they're accessing you know, your product from two different browsers, uh, or devices as we'll call them more generically, uh, there's a lot of issues with this. So you want to be able to reconcile the fact that it's the same person coming from two different places. So let's say we'll con consider identifiers, you know, we'll call them D for devices, D1 and D2 for your two different devices, and then they share some sort of login, which is how you actually know that they're the same person. So if you continue using this single identifier mechanism where you only have you know, the device identifiers, one common solution to this problem is to try and introduce a concept of aliasing. So the ability to say, oh, because these two devices are somehow associated with the same login, uh, we can figure that out and then we'll, we'll alias them together to say they're essentially the same. Uh, that's along the right track, but in itself, it kind of has a few limitations and complexities uh, that need to be ironed out. The first one is because you don't actually have the concept of a login as part of the identity resolution mechanism, again, you're only using the single identifier, it's hard to tell when you have a D3, like whether it should be aliased or when it should be aliased. Right, so it's pretty clear that the login needs to be elevated as a concept in order to tie these all together and decide when the aliasing happens. The second piece is D1 and D2 uh, are aliased without direction in that neither of them is more canonical than the other. And that's a problem because downstream systems now have a slightly more complex task of deciding, okay, you're telling me D1 and D2 are the same, but which user should I aggregate information as? Maybe it doesn't matter, but often in distributed cases where your system is computing the same uh, thing in a bunch of different places, they have to be able to make that same decision so that your metrics end up being accurate. And so some concept of precedence is important. Neither of these problems uh, is too difficult to solve, thankfully. And so we'll describe a scheme uh, that we use here at Amplitude that kind of addresses both. To introduce that scheme, I'll talk about two different concepts that we use. First is that device ID, which represents uh, yeah, the browser, device, uh, whatever information you have about events coming from someone who's not logged in. The second is user ID. So that's a generic concept representing a login. Uh, and it's important that user ID is a canonical representation of the user. It means you know who this is, and that ID has higher precedence over the device ID. An important part of the identity resolution mechanism that we'll talk about is the fact that device ID gets associated and disassociated from user ID depending on what data we see. Finally, we take these two identifiers and resolve it to a third ID that we call the amplitude ID, which is what we actually do computation on. So let me explain a little bit about how these identifiers work in practice with an example. So I'll draw a little table down here and we'll, we'll use some shorthand for user ID, uh, device ID, and amplitude ID. So every row in this table is gonna represent one instance of identity resolution. Usually an instance corresponds to an event in our system. So we see a piece of data that has uh, some of these identifiers on it. I remember again that these two you know, come from the data and then this one is derived. So the data will come in with device ID and user ID. Uh, user ID can be null because you may not know who it is. And then we will derive amplitude ID from it. 
All right, so let's run through some examples. First, let's suppose we get uh, something like the original situation we described, where you have a device ID, uh, D1, and no user ID. That is, a user lands on your website or opens up your app, and they haven't logged in or anything. Amplitude ID is going to be a number uh, for simplicity. That's better for computation downstream. And we're going to allocate them incrementally in that the first user we see is going to have amplitude ID 1. So because we know nothing and there have been no users in the system, amplitude ID 1 is the correct uh, answer there. So now let's say that user does a second event, still on the same device, but now they log in as user U. So user U on device ID D1, we're going to assume that this is the same person. And because this pattern is really common. For example, you open the app or visit the browser, uh, and then you log in. Your events will look something like this, where you first have anonymous data, and then you have logged in data. And since we've never seen you before, we're going to opportunistically reuse amplitude ID 1 here, and then remember this fact, that user U uh, now corresponds to amplitude ID 1. Notice that there is an assumption here that when you log in on a device after you see anonymous behavior, that is the same user. Uh, but we found that that assumption is very safe in practice, um, and it's better to make it than to not and have to do different resolution and merging later. All right, so now let's say there's a second device, device ID 2, and we receive another anonymous event. So no user has logged in. In this case, because we've never seen device 2 before, and the next amplitude ID to allocate is 2, we're going to give it the ID 2. That's all pretty straightforward. Uh, but now let's suppose that same user U logs in on device 2. OK, by our previous logic, because this user is logging in on a device that was previously anonymous, we imagine that they should be the same person. So this user should be the same as user 2. On the other hand, because we know this is user U, and we've seen them before, and we've already associated them with user 1, that actually takes precedence over the anonymous device. So we're going to give this also 1. But we need to remember the fact that we think user 2 and user 1 are actually the same people. And we're going to record it like this. This we call a merge, which is very similar to the concept of aliasing that we talked about earlier. But it's a slight differences in terms of the fact that it has a specific direction. These merges only happen from an anonymous device identifier to a canonical user identifier. And so the direction problem is kind of solved. And because they're based on this device ID and user ID scheme, we know how to identify it when it happens. It's specifically when the same user logs in on two anonymous devices. Cool. So given this mechanism, um, we can now compute you know, the, co the correct identities for all of the events that come in. But the identification of this merge uh, is not actually the hard part. The hard part is incorporating it into your metrics. And it's really important to incorporate it into your metrics because if you don't, you end up with a lot, a lot of things that are broken. For example, funnels that cross you know, these users you know, two to one, they won't work. You, know, you might get bad attribution. Uh, you'll just get broken user journeys in the most important part, uh, the sign up and login flow of your product. And so it's really important to actually incorporate this downstream in your analytics, which is the hard part. Fortunately, we've talked about uh, this type of problem before um, in our distributed query system. If you think about these user merges as a table that maps you know, the anonymous user to the canonical user, you're essentially performing a user join on that table with your event data. And if you do that join, you can have the correct identity at query time for all of your events. So check out that video uh, for all that information. And it's this combination of the identity resolution mechanism plus the application of those user joins downstream in your query system that leads to accurate results. And so the Amplitude system uses this mechanism, and we've processed you know, nearly 100 billion identities. Um, obviously, there are more identities uh, more than one identity per person in the world, because if you're using different browsers, different apps, uh, you end up with different uh, device identifiers. Uh, and we are able to serve queries, again, across trillions of events using this identity resolution mechanism and the application of those joins at query time in under a few seconds.
And so that's how we do identity resolution at Amplitude. Thanks.